which undrafted free agent is priority number one for the Niners to re-sign this offseason? There's going to be like 21 of them. Un unrestricted free agent. Unrestricted free agent. Right. I, I can start off with, I think Trent Williams is the most important to me because just how Justin School played against Green Bay. Mm -hmm. If I uh, if School can kind of surprise people for the rest of the year, then maybe. But I think Williams is one of the best offensive linemen available this offseason, and he's a big priority. But that's the biggest. I think the first one they should re-sign is Jordan Willis just because he's a free agent. I think he's performed well enough, and he's cheap. Get him under contract as soon as the season ends. Get him under contract for next year. Don't let a bidding war happen where he's going to be worth $4 million. Get him for cheap, $2 million. And that's what I want. Get back those depth guys that aren't a lot of money. Sign them first so that there's way there's no bidding war over their services because no one's going to be bidding for him if he doesn't do much. But if you let him out on the open market, then things are going to happen. Not just Jordan Willis, all those type of guys. That's a very good outside-the-box answer, Maverick. Trent Williams is left tackle, premium position in the NFL. If we see another version of Justin School like we saw against the Packers, you have to re-sign him. Without a doubt, there's a huge drop-off between Trent Williams and those next-tier guys that include Jaquaski Tart, Kyle Juszczyk, and... Kwan Williams, Kendrick Bourne, there's so many free agents, but Trent Williams, just because it's so difficult to find a high quality left tackle, you need to bring him back. Unless, like Maverick touched on, Justin School plays at a very high level and closes out the season, depending on how much time, because Trent Williams' status is still up in the air, but if we see Justin School play at that 2019 level when he subbed in for Mike McGlinchey, Joe Staley, then maybe Williams becomes less of a priority, but for right now, he is number one, and it's not close as far as bringing back next season. Yeah, I agree on Williams. Just uh, in the interest of not being repetitive, I'll give a different answer. Um, how about one of these cornerbacks? You know, whether whether you, you say it's Sherman, I know that people aren't too excited about bringing him back because he's another year older. Uh, we just talked about Verrett and the risk there, right? Um, and same thing with Williams in the nickel position. I don't want to go into a draft and a free agency session where we need to plug two or three cornerbacks because then that's going to force your hand and you're probably going to need to overpay because you're so desperate or you're going to be in a situation where you now have to spend a first round pick on a cornerback because that's what you're left with. So I don't want to be making moves out of desperateness. So I'd like to fill one of those huge holes uh, with our cornerbacks before we go into the open free agency period. Yeah, I think it's Verrett. I don't think it's Trent Williams. Let me see if I can argue this one out. I mean, the way I look at Verrett is he transformed the defense. He's playing at a very high level. I think he's playing at a higher level than Trent Williams right now. Now, I don't know how long Jason Verrett's going to last. He could he could fall apart tomorrow. But for that reason and his age, I don't think he'll be too expensive. I think you can get him on a reasonable contract and not screw up your salary structure. Trent Williams? That mm -hmm. guy. If you re-sign Trent Williams, that's a five-year deal worth – a uh, hundred million dollars at least. And maybe you say he's worth it, but he still hasn't played 16 games in a season since 2013. He's not getting any younger. Uh, I mean, maybe he'll be better next year, but maybe not. I mean, I, is he really worth $20 million a year at his age? I know it's like, well, if you don't pay him, well, what are you going to do? You start just, yeah. that's true. But, and I haven't looked at like all the free agents that, that, that are going to be available. Couldn't you get someone who's not as good as Trent Williams, maybe give him a one-year deal? It's really too bad that the Niners took the, away the possibility of giving him the franchise tag. That's what I would have done. Give him the franchise yeah. tag. But a five-year deal worth $100 million when he's coming off a season where he'll play, I don't know, maybe maybe eleven, maybe 12 games, maybe 13 games, and, and maybe nine of them were good. Ah. I'm a little nervous about Trent Williams locking him up to that kind of deal. I, I can read yeah. you the free agent. I don't oh, disagree yeah. with what you say. I don't want to give mm -hmm. him that money, uh, that yeah. much money, because then it's you're you're tied to him. You have to him. Just in school, playing good this year, playing well, would have been great for this great. team's flexibility. But that next year, it's Trent Williams, Russell Okung, Alejandro Villanueva, Jason Peters, who's thirty. He's going to be forty. Yeah. Garrett Bowles <laughs> from Denver, Cam Robinson, and Kelvin Beecham. So it's not. The, there's options. There's yeah. Options. 
Yeah, it, it would have yeah. been great if McGlinchey played like the, the the front office wanted him to, and he could have moved to left tackle this next year. But I think it's pretty much Trent Williams, or they got to draft someone in the top two rounds. Yeah. So I think Trent Williams is definitely going to the highest bidder. He's not going to give the Niners a hometown discount. I don't think he did. <laughs> the, the one thing <laughs> I could argue with that is I could see the scenario where Trent Williams played with coaches he didn't like, and he does like playing with Kyle. He did not play last year because he didn't want to play for some coaches. So I could see the situation where he would be like, the only way I'm playing is for Kyle. Yeah. Hey, if he wants to play for 17 or 18 million, great. If he wants to get more than David Pakhtiari got, hey, good luck, dude. Kick rocks. Would but you guys be comfortable with Brunskill as your left tackle for 16 games nope. and then putting someone else in at guard? I might be more comfortable with Brunskill at right tackle than Mike McGlinchey. Is that can we talk about that? Yeah. So no. McGlinchey at left tackle, Brunskill at right tackle. Oh no, no, no. McGlinchey at right guard. McGlinchey at left bench. <laughs> <laughs> he played guard for a half a game against the Vikings in 2018. I don't know. He might be the next Alex Boone, the 6'8 right guard who's not terrible. I don't see how he can stay at right tackle unless he improves. He's yeah. killing the Niners. He's killing the 49ers. What? Grant, to go back to Trent Williams and David Bakhtiari, yes. Bakhtiari is like three years younger than Williams. I don't Fair. see Fair. I can't see Fair. Williams ever getting a five year, $100 million contract. I Great. can see it being in like the two year. Four, hey. 36, 38 million dollar range Sign somewhere in that ballpark. Yeah. Pick them up. Hey, if it's all yeah. that's all it is, and great. You don't want to just send away a Pro Bowl left tackle for no reason, but hundred million dollars, you gotta really yeah. trust him at that point.